Well, let's talk about this. Let's get right into it. Um, episode eight, the season finale of season two, the queen, whoever was first thoughts. I mean, I, I actually, yes, absolutely. And, and if you guys don't mind, I'd like to go first on my first thoughts on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I loved this episode. Um, I actually so enjoyed it. I felt like it moved the plot forward more than many episodes in the entire season. But probably around 25 minutes in when it cut to, I think it was Corliss getting ready to go off and sail. And I realized that they were pretty much doing what they had done on the long night episode um, in Winterfell where they're just like, all right, this is going to be like every single character gets this moment before we see anything happen. And I was so pissed off, like probably 25 to 30 minutes into this episode. Cause I just knew, I already knew that they were not going to show us any action at all. And, uh, well, I guess we get like a, we get a mud fight, but, uh, you know, that's, it wasn't, it wasn't a battle. So, with that being said, and that being the biggest criticism of the episode, um, so much cool Game of Thrones stuff happened in this, uh, including a pretty cool like uh, finale to Damon's arc, which I think we all would have liked to have seen sooner, but the way that it did play out was really cool, and it, it was well done. You know, like the character through and through... Mm-hmm could have been done better in probably four episodes to five where they could have told that story. But with kind of what Trent had said earlier in the season, when we were talking about him needing to be kind of preoccupied until the end of this season, I feel like it was still a satisfying conclusion to his arc. And he's, I think one of all of our favorite characters. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he had quite the journey in Heron Hall this season. And I, I think <laughs> they wrapped it up in, in a very, nice bow i i liked how it all ended and kind of where he got to at the end of his own personal journey there yeah i agree it was satisfying um and and i like the way that he got there we'll talk about that more in depth when we get to that scene yes Mm -hmm. um huge scene i i have a lot of like kind of echo a lot of the same thoughts as chris i actually and i know a lot of people have had this take but I think that this episode would have acted better as a season opener and the previous episode would have acted better as a finale with the last shot being Rhaenyra and uh, the three dragons yeah, and Vagar turning away. That Um, still just hits so hard that like that being kind of the way that the season ended would have just been so epic that even if there wasn't any kind of conflict that we got to see i think people would have been a little bit more like like i am excited for next season but i think it just very excited for next season it just didn't leave off on this like epic moment right like well i don't even think that it needed to lead off on an epic moment i think if the penultimate had a little more something like i know that we got the dragon pit and everything but it didn't seem like there were any pieces taken off the board here with yeah. the exception of Rainice earlier um, in in the season. Which was probably the best episode of the season. Now, I agree with you. I think this was a fantastic episode of Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. It just yeah. did not hit well for a season finale. This felt like it should have had another one to two more episodes. Um, I, know, I don't know why the they did it for eight. Season one had ten episodes. This one... Only went with eight. I mean, the especially with I, all the filler that we longer. got, they were they were they longer, were. I think, but with all the filler that we got in episodes five through five and six specifically, I was just like, man, there's so many other things that you could have focused on to move this along. Um, but ultimately, I think the show is a very very good show. It's going in the right direction, um, mm-hmm. and I think after everything is said and done, we'll look back on this season a lot more fondly than being in the moment right now just because we have that uh that urge to see what happens next and we know it's going to be two years before season 
three. <sighs> yeah. It's like and the it's end confirmed. of uh, Across the Spider-Verse where it really leaves you blue-balled wanting more. And it's oh, like, God. oh, I don't know when we're going to see the third one. I guess we'll, I, ha- it'll, I had it'll to forget about that ending, honestly. I'm mad that you just brought that back up. I had <laughs> blocked that out successfully, so I don't have to be having longing. Yeah. We did get confirmation from Ryan Condal, the showrunner, that uh, season four will be the final season. Well, that's good. And also... Okay. We did get that nice teaser for um, A Night of the Seven Kingdoms at the beginning of this finale. I think yeah, that'll come out next year. I don't know anything year. about that. I, it did say 2025. I don't know anything about that, though. Um, what's what's the plot of it? It follows Sir Duncan the Tall and Egg, which yeah. I don't know if I, I, I know who Egg is. I don't know if I want to... I, I know who Egg is like, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they'll reveal that in like the first couple episodes, but yeah. um, there are a lot of people online that absolutely hated this, but they're not making the distinguish distinguishing factor that they hate it as a finale, not as an episode. People are just dogging on it. It was a fantastic episode. There yeah. were so were many awesome it. things. Oh yeah, dude. It's getting yeah. a lot of hate. It's people, it got people describe it as bomb. like a 76 minute trailer for season three, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, it kind of yeah. is, but uh, it should not be getting, it, it got worse totally reviews than the season finale of game of Thrones. <laughs> and it doesn't someone, deserve that. Someone said, bomb. I don't know about well, all that. <laughs> someone said in our comments, what came first, the Duncan or the egg? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Um, kind of jumping back to that for a second. I've read the the Night of the Seven Kingdoms short stories with Duncan Egg, and they are awesome. And I'm very excited for it's set a hundred years prior to Daenerys and a hundred years after House of the Dragons. I read so. a synopsis of like what it's about, and it sounds fun. Yeah, no, it'll it'll be there's be some kind of adventures in the Game of Thrones universe that'll be yeah. It'll be nice to also have something to hold us over in that like middle year between seasons. Of yes. The Dragon. Yes. Cause I am, I'll tell you right now, like I'm, I'm like frustratedly awaiting the next season. Like I'm not I happy I'm, about, they, they left I'm so frustrated much. with, with HBO. They knew after the first season, like, like I don't understand why you have to wait for it to come out and green light it. Like you're not going to make a season of house of the dragon like you did in the first season and then not finish it. Just fucking green light it, write it, and get those fuckers on camera. Like, <laughs> it does not make sense. And plus, get the actors want to get on with their lives at a certain point, you know? No, you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> it needs to it's be funny, Stranger Harrison Things style, where you're just like, for you're going to spend all the way until your mid 30s filming this show, as you're going to start when you're like nine. And by the time you're 34, you're allowed to leave. Mm. And then we're bringing you back for a legacy show. I was going to say, uh, Kit Harrington came out and says he, he doesn't watch House of the Dragon, and he doesn't know if he'll ever watch Game of Thrones again. <laughs> were not going to do a Jon Snow him. show at some point? They were going to, but they didn't find the story compelling no. enough. How is it not compelling enough? They never... <sighs> In, fa- in in fairness, I didn't need any kind of continuation. I mean, how are you going to get a threat David bigger Thrones than what he experiences? Story. How are you going to get a threat bigger than what he experiences in Game of Thrones with the uh, brand can become a threat? That would be cool, but then it's he, not a Jon Snow show; it's a continuation of Game of Thrones. I'm I'm sure George has limitations on what you can do. I mean, that would be the point of it, though. The continuation of Game of Thrones, one way or the other. George I'd love to see talking books. the The main enemy for the Jon Snow show is the Dothraki horde in the open field, and John has to <laughs> John <laughs> must face them. The White Walker Dothrakis. The whole, I mean, all the no, t- no, just the normal Dothrakis. Oh, okay. Rob, Robert Baratheon's greatest enemy. <laughs> all right, let's get into. Uh, the highlights of this episode chris i know you went through and made some notes so i'll let you kind of take us through this yeah yeah so let's start with let's start with thailand the one action sequence of this 
of this film or of this episode. And we're not going to necessarily stay in order here, but we'll just kind of talk about all the pieces. So maybe you guys want to talk about all the green pieces first, and then we'll talk all the blacks. You, you meant okay. Tymon, yeah. right? Ty- or Tygor? Oh, yeah. I was like, Ty wait, I, I know I got his name right. Yeah. Tyrod was one of the things. Tyrod was one. Yeah. She called him Tyrod and Tywin, which yep. I was like, oh, that's like his like great great grandson's name or something. Mm. A nice little nod. And I forget what the other one was. Um, I just want to say I loved everything about this. Me Hated too. Hated that it was in the finale. This felt Me like too. a classic <laughs> mid-season story arc. If this had been in episode five, we would have been eating this up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I still enjoy it. SS. Yes. Yes, Essos is definitely strange land. It's a different I, it, land. Yeah, really though. I mean, especially when she makes the joke later, uh, kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but when she's like, "We'll feast upon the flesh." Have you ever feasted upon the flesh of your enemies? And he's like, "No," and I would not. And she, she's like, "I'm just messing with you." <laughs> like you would insult yes, my, my house. <laughs> It was just, that was like a really fun world building. It kind of gave a little bit more character to the Lannisters, which we haven't seen a ton of, you know, outside of them kind of being kind of puppets in the high yeah, council. I like it. I, I think mm-hmm. it kind of is going to start to show us how the Lannisters build their house up to, you know, what we see in, um, you know, post Robert's rebellion. I did want to ask you something because we touched on the fact that this felt like a middle of the season kind of story arc. Are we concerned with Ryan Condal um, being able to piece all of these specific scenes and story arcs together in the right way? Because the pacing just felt so off in this season. I, everything, the sum of all of its part is a little bit less than everything individually because all the acting and the story that's going on is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I feel like the only complaint we have is like, specific pacing complaints like Damon being in it somewhere for too long or it not ending it feeling like it kind of ends on a low note um yeah that kind I get of that I think that what we have to look forward to though is the bulk of the story at this point you know Lucerus's death Rainey's death these are all kind of preambles to the true dance I think once Damon is fully engaged once Amond is fully engaged once Daron comes from old t- or from yeah from old town once we got a glimpse of his dragon in this too mm-hmm. i know that was that was nice it's like a every- bright sparkling blue dragon you know we 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 were we pretty much had anticipated we would not see anything about him for the rest of the season and uh mm-hmm. they gave us a little little nod which is nice but i, I, I think mean, if nothing else, next season is going to be an absolute bloodbath. Yes. Yes. I think only be four seasons. better be. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of bloodshed and I truthfully don't know how long this war goes on. So there is a possibility of it being not like a one year kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Do you think the war well, extends into season four or do you think they're going to be like kind of, I wrapping think things up. Maybe yeah, like I don't know. I don't know. Early, like early season four, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Remember think there might be season four. The I think there's a second stage to the war. If I'm being honest, oh, there now probably that, is. Now that we saw where uh, where uh, Aegon mm-hmm. goes, you know, yeah. I think there's a potential for and where kind of... Rhaenyra ends up um, through the vision in the weirwood tree. Yes, exactly. But we'll get to that. Um. I thought this was so funny with Thailand and how uh, she requests that she says, I want to bear, I want you to uh, have my children or I want to have children with you. Yeah. And then um, she says with her wives, I was with like, her many wives. he was so she... relieved. <laughs> He's like, how many do you have? I said, Oh Lord, have mercy. How many uh-huh. wives do you have? Wife, two wife, three wife. Good Lord. <laughs> The Lord is tempted. He looked, I gotta get out of here. He looked pretty shook when the next time we see him, when he's like standing uh, on the the, the, the bow of the ship. I wonder, I wonder how many wives he had to. It's a rough, it's a rough night, dude. Honestly, 
I feel like he, I love, again, going back to this, this is like a character building moment. And I hope that like moving forward, we see him like, yeah, I'll go do this thing. Yeah, I mean, now the Greens are going to have an army of bastards yeah. too. They're all Lannister. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right, so that is Tyland Lannister. He does get down in the mud pit with Admiral Shiraco Lohar. Dude, that was a great fight. That was just that felt fun. It was, you know, what it brought you back to, and why it was cool was it made you think of Jamie Lannister in the mud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It had it had Jamie Lannister vibes. So I had there was another Jamie Lannister vibe. Uh, in this episode with Otto being locked. Yes. It looked, like a, it looked like a wagon. Some people are saying a dungeon. That looked like a wagon. A wagon a cell. cell. So like it showed that it was a cell, and then it showed the wagon after, which reveals is Aegon Laris, but I don't know if Otto's in a wagon cell or not. It was hard to tell. Mm-hmm. It might have just been a transition, but he's definitely imprisoned one way or another, which is... Yeah. I mean, That's why we haven't we... been able to get in contact with him. <laughs> yeah, I was guessing we haven't actually known that until now right like we heard no. that beesburys were gonna try to like go to war with the high towers but w- did they say that they had captured him nope they never said that they, they, did not say say they couldn't get a hold of Otto. he wasn't yeah. implied they that it him. is it's implied that it's the beesburys though mm-hmm. lord liner beesbury trent had to remind me that that's the guy that chris and cole caved his face in with his like uh high council orb yeah um, so yeah, uh, after that, so he's got a pretty formidable Navy, um, and, and we'll talk about kind of the Naval matchup, but let's talk about Laris. So God, I, I love Laris so much. Clubfoot. Dude. I mean, I feel like this is a very, very smart move. He plays the game better than anyone else in this show. And this also sets the precedent for Targaryens whisking across the narrow sea in times of extreme mm-hmm. danger, mm-hmm. which which I like that that kind of did he is... mention that they're going to Bravos or Pentos? Did did he say that? I don't know if he mentioned the city. I think yeah. he said Esso. I don't know if he yeah. he may have. I may have just missed it. Oh, he said he Esso. said okay. he said Bravos is where he had transferred all of Heron Hall's gold. That's tr- yeah, 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 with the Iron Bank. Yeah, it would. I mean, I would. It would be really interesting to see something similar to Danny getting the Dothraki army and coming back to King's Landing, and Aegon doing something similar after Rhaenyra Gets is probably the mercenary army to come back with him. Uh huh. And yeah. and you would assume that at this point, when he does come back, that uh, most of the dragons are gone. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so you don't really have that advantage anymore. <laughs> So I could see that happening. Yeah. The Golden Company. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if Rhaenyra loses the throne after all the dragons just die? That would be crazy. <clears throat> we'll see. Huh? Um, I believe that all the dragons are not wiped out in this war, though. Because they talk about the continued breeding of them and how stunted they become eventually. Mm. Did you guys uh, notice the line that Aegon says when... Laris is trying to convince him to go and he's just like kind of despondent and depressed. And he's like, what, what is left for me? He's like, Oh, did they tell God. you that my, my cock <laughs> is gone. <Yeah. laughs> it exploded like a sausage on the fire. And I was just imagining like, you know, when you're grilling sausages and like it gets hot yeah. and it just starts it is, splitting apart. Just... <laughs> oh my God. I would have, I would have begged for death. That was give me overdose me on the milk of the poppy, please. Yeah, that was yeah. graphic. That's tough. that's tough. I feel bad for him now. He can't. I mean, he can't <laughs> sire any heirs now. No, I guess he true. has a daughter still. But... He has a daughter. Yeah. Wow. Um. Okay. So, you know, at the end of this episode, after their conversation, they do. It does. It does show that they do go to Bravos, um, or at least they're like en route somewhere. I don't know if it necessarily showed Bravos, but they're going to Essos. Yeah. So, so, did you notice that when Helena is having a conversation with Amond and uh, like 
telling him what his future unfold is going to be that she says, you know, Aegon uh, will become king again. Right now he sits on a wooden throne. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. I wonder what that means. Maybe he'll be in a wheelchair. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. And maybe he'll I take some kind of position is. of power in Essos. Yeah. I don't even know if he'll do that. I think he'll honestly just hide in exile and maybe try to start building an army. That's what I mean. He'll he, oh, he'll yeah. at some point come to some kind of power position to be able to build some kind of army. Yeah. I mean, Laris is there with him too. Right. So it'll be like... Um, oh man, Nick. I can't wait to see some adventures of Laris and Aegon. <laughs> I agree. I agree. The That's going to be... duo of cripples. Some fun Game of thrones stuff. Yeah. Um, anything else with these two that you guys wanted to talk about? I mean, I think kind of you summed it up, Trent, with the sausage comment, but uh... <laughs> that's enough said. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about Sir Chris, Sir Kristen Cole, and Sir Gwen Hightower. I thought this conversation was pretty interesting. Um, I'll let uh, Brand- Brandon. Do you want to? Why don't you talk to sure. us a little bit about this one? <laughs> At this point we can see that Kristen has kind of just given way to like, the wars out of his hands. He is basically all but given up hope. <laughs> he is a broken <laughs> man. Like, he, he is an absolutely broken man. He's just sitting there like Sir this, Wayne, like 90% of the time. <laughs> and just, just sharpen my sword, just to oil it up, make it nice and pretty. But Sir Gwen confronts him finally as he's um, smelling the, the handkerchief or whatever of, uh, Allison's his, favorite, Allison. his promised, yeah. his promised love of <laughs> Allison, her favor, and uh, Sir Gawain confronts him like, "You have no valor. What, what happened about your oath of being pure?" He's like, "Is anyone really pure? Aren't we all just corrupted men?" Now that this is going on, also like, do we even have a chance to get like, do we even like, what are we supposed to do in a war like this? It's to the dragon <laughs> the, the dance is happening. What am I supposed to do? I saw a man literally fall to ashes in front of me as I touched. <laughs> There's, not, there's nothing I can do about this. Gwen, it's out of our hands. Why are we even on the battlefield anymore? I love Gwen how is like shit, man. <laughs> talking some real shit and just kind of sits down next to him. He literally says like, he's like, that is quite a bleak outlook on life. <laughs> he is so despondent I mean, and dejected yeah. after this. Like, it is so funny to see how he comes from a place of like. I need to uphold my sister and the queen's honor or queen regent's honor. And then like or queen, queen mother, I guess now. Um, Mm -hmm. And then boom, like Kristen Cole just hits him with the, I watched a man fall to dust. Like, Oh, well in that case, you're right. This really doesn't matter. (laughs) Yeah. What do you guys think happens with Chris? Do you think we get a, like a little bit of a, villain to hero arc i don't think they're going to completely heroize heroize him i don't know if they'll give him a full arc like that i and i kind of hope they don't i don't really want to see him redeemed i feel like he doesn't have that moxie that jamie did where he, I, it felt like he could have that redemption arc mm-hmm. Kristen has always kind of I, been kind of a shit lord yeah i could see him like in his last moments getting some kind of redemption through like, like maybe combat. sacrificing himself to save Sir right. or something. Right. But I don't I you I don't think that we're gonna get the full Jamie Lannister. I don't think he deserves it. No. I mean Jamie didn't really deserve it here. He fucking pushed Bran out of a fucking window. <laughs> That's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> a lot more charismatic though, I will say. But he wasn't out there calling Rhaenyra the C word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to uh, I'm interested to see where Cole goes, but if I'm being completely honest, I would think that he probably just dies in some battle and ceremony. I want to hate him more. They're kind of making me hate him a little bit less. I want more hate to see him die. Like that's yeah. what I want. I want to be satisfied at this guy's death, like Joffrey. That was a very that was a very satisfying death to watch. Yeah. There's no chance. Ra- yeah. Ramsey. 
There's no chance mm-hmm. Kristen flips either, so it's like... Mm-mm. No, I don't see that happening. Yeah, and I don't think he makes it through the war, so... I don't either. Hello, um, let's see. Now, we talked about Gwen. We talked about Kristen. Let's talk about <laughs> Eamon's direct response to recognizing that there are now three new dragon riders. He won't happy. He no. was so mad. So unhappy that he wants to bring <laughs> he wants to bring his sister who is technically yes a dragon rider. We were too, Robin. We were very yes. sorry, tired of seeing Damon and Aaron. <laughs> Thank he God they nice freed arc. our guy. He had a nice arc in the end. It, it wrapped Yeah, up it was well, it was worth it, yeah. yeah. So Amen you know, the end of last episode, obviously, we got that iconic shot. I would say it kind of encapsulates the whole season. That and the shot of Rainies are going to be the two that kind of come to mind when I think of this season as a whole. And mm-hmm. um, so after that immediate aftermath, Amond goes to Sharp Point, which is on the coast near Dragonstone, and just burns the entire city to cinders. And it's one of the keeps of someone on Rhaenyra's. Uh, I think it's Alfred, well. the one that she sent to uh, talk with Damon. Is it? I didn't. I wasn't. That aware, dude is having but... a bad week. Then. <laughs> oh goodness! I gracious. love when they show him later in the episode, kind of just shuffling away, like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> He's <laughs> like, "Oh shit!" You're gonna hang me for what I've been talking about. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, um, Amy basically said, "Like, fuck your Legos." Yeah. yeah. He. He I'm gonna go kick him all over. He melted that little little keep, and uh, I mean, my only criticism of the scene was I would have liked to have seen more of him attacking that city. To see him burning it down. Yeah, absolutely. Just really drive home how ruthless he is right now. I did really like to see that he was standing back after he was burning it, and then you see him take flight again, and you can just hear the cries of the poor people. In the castle, Melting. they're like, "Oh no, he's coming back!" I thought we were, I thought this was over. <laughs> Road two, run! <laughs> uh, not the come jump buttons. Uh, it's like um, a cat first, playing with its food. <laughs> before it, before it showed Eamon there, I, I actually thought that we were back at Rook's Rest, and, and I thought they were me too. That Sunfire hadn't died, and, and Sunfire was just going absolute ape shit out there. Oh, I did not think that. I thought it was retraced at first too, though. Just lay I have a, I have a friend that's been telling me all season that Eamon's a good guy, and I was like, "You're one hundred percent wrong." Guy? I was like, "You're one hundred percent wrong," and he's like, "They're just trying to make him to be out to too much of a bad guy." He gave me some examples. I'm like, "He fucking burned his brother's cock. <laughs> <laughs> he split it like a sausage over an open fire." <laughs> Brandon, Brandon or Trent froze right at that moment, but what he was going to say is he burned his brother's cock off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I was like, I'll, I'll hear you out. And then he does this. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. yeah. Not a good He's guy. He's irredeemable at this point. He's a bad it's boy. I, I, like, I like a villain personally. Me too. Yeah. I didn't think that we needed him to be. I was like, you mean the guy that was relentlessly bullied? As a ch- this is classic fucking school shooter kid. Yeah. There's yeah. no way not, that this is going to be a good guy. Yeah. Not every villain needs to be complex and have ulterior motives. Here. Like I can relate to that. Sometimes a good villain can just be a villain through and through and just be evil. Yeah. And those are good as well. You can have both. Amen was definitely giving the this kid vibes. Yes. Why do you have yes. that just available at any time? <laughs> just in case. Just in case. Oh, okay. Right. Um, well, we're not going to talk too much about Rhaenyra yet, but I will note that because of Aemon doing this, uh, she is forced to reconcile with the fact that her having more dragon riders is absolutely not going to stop Aemon from just melting people. Uh, and if she... Way. Yeah, so it's either kill him, kill his dragons, kill all of the other dragons on the other side, kill all of the other Targaryens on the other side, or be wiped out. There is no middle ground, which we kind of have been alluding to, but yet again, another reminder to Rhaenyra, you need to just go to war. 
and Aemon <laughs> understands that too, which is why he's trying to get Helena to ride on her dragon, Dreamfire, because he's he tells Allison, he's like, listen, this isn't just about us losing the crown. We are all gonna fucking die here if we don't do something. Mm. <laughs> They're gonna come and toast us. They've got seven of those sons of a bitches. Ugh. I mean, the Greens are in trouble right now. There are a lot of dragon riders on the black side, and one of the dragon riders for the Greens doesn't really even want to necessarily be a dragon rider. Seven and with an eighth one at the end, right? That's number eight, or is that number oh, seven? Yeah. Sheep Sealer. So you've got. Cyrax, Caraxes, Sea Smoke, Vermithor, uh, Vermax, Silverwing, and then Sheep Stealer. Is there one I'm missing? Oh, and then Bela's yeah, Dragon. Yeah, and Bela's What was Bela's Dragon's name? Uh, I can find out. Wait one second. Yeah, yeah so sure. they've got after after Reyna gets Sheep Stealer, they're with Moon they've Dancer. Got Dragon. Moon, Moon Dancer, Dancer, yeah. yeah. So eight, wow, that's pretty yeah, good. To eight versus Vagar and Darren's dragon. <laughs> yeah, and Helena if she decides to get on and, and help fight, which it doesn't seem like she is willing to. Actually, they're going to get Ulf's dragon too. I'm just, I've got a lot to say about Ulf. I wasn't on the. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I know that you were very <laughs> down on Ulf last episode, and he's kind of showing his true colors here as well. So all my homies hate Ulf. My homies don't fuck with Ulf. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we'll get into Ulf soon. Let's make sure that we've covered. All right. So we've got last but not least, we're just going to jump to Allison talking with Rhaenyra. Oh, we're and jumping then we, right to the end, huh? And then, okay. and then we can talk about all of the other pieces. So Allison being the last member of House Green that we have not discussed uh, in this story. She makes a last ditch effort to basically do what Rhaenyra did, but vice versa and come and beg for some kind of peace treaty, sue for peace, and ultimately agrees she's to give her son. To give the whole city in the, in the like, oh, you want peace Trump now? Yeah. You want peace now that I'm winning, bitch? I got, I got eight dragons. Yeah, you want peace. Hey, Allison, you started this fucking war with, <laughs> with your misunderstanding of what King Harris was saying and now you're going to do this this is what we call negotiating from a position of abysmal weakness <laughs> you have nothing <laughs> except yeah. for this plan mm. yeah. I, I personally think that I mean ultimately she she agrees to sacrifice Aegon and or excuse me a, yeah, a gone, a gone, a gone. Yeah, ultimately is unable to fulfill her side of the deal because, as we mentioned earlier, Laris whisks a gone away. Well, Laris gonna make for a big plot point in season three because that's the whole thing that Allison was saying. She's like, "I will open the gates, the gates. for yeah. you, for your armies to march in." As Aemond is out dealing and fighting in the Riverlands, you can come back and take the throne. And Rhaenyra is like, "Well." You know, it's not just that as simple as that. I have to have Aegon's head. The people yeah. won't respect me otherwise. I, I have to come in as a conqueror, essentially, so that there's no question to who the ruler is. And after some some thinking, Allison comes to the conclusion: Yeah, that is the only way. And now that we know that Aegon's being whisked away by Laris to Essos, what's going to happen when Rhaenyra gets there? If if they actually go through with this plan. I, I think that's going to be kind of something that we see uh, transpire when Aegon comes back. Like her not being able to kill him is going to be, and he'll be the king like, that's returned. It, it depends on if Helena's vision is true, which they all have been so far. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I also I think. think... Go, go ahead, please. I was just say I think she sits on the throne for a while, and then. I, I think something's gonna happen. I mean, if yeah. vision is right. You know, Allison was like, "Man, I wish I could give Aemon's head instead of Aegon's." Right. Yeah. <laughs> I did like the a son for a son callback. Yes. Yeah. He's like that yes. poor boy already lost his cock. Why do you need his head? Leave him alone. Take <laughs> Aemon. <laughs> 
honestly, they could just be like, there's no way he can sire children. So, like, you have no threat to your throne. Well, I think that Allison realizes Aemond will now die in battle. That Vagar, he'll, Vagar and him will take some people out, but he will die in battle. Hopefully. So. <laughs> Most likely, but yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah. Aemond All right. Formidable. Um, and then we talked about Aemon, you know, talking with Helena about flying Dreamfire into battle. Do we want to unpack the the prophecy that she sure she breaks down? All right, so this to me was one of the most. This is Helena's best scene by far. This into the Damon Heron Hall. Luigi's Mansion moment. The fact that we get that mm-hmm. reveal at the end of Damon's vision at the Weirwood Forest that it's Helena is pretty fucking wild. There's she, a lot to unpack here. Dude, she was I, the one I whispering. Have a lot of questions. Remember when that dude tried to betray uh, Rhaenyra? Traitor. It's literally captioned. It says, traitor, yeah. in the background. Oh, wow. And it's, yeah. it's, it's Helena. Or That's the Three-Eyed awesome. Raven. Yeah, so I don't know if it's necessarily Helena there, yeah. but... I, I, I love that. You know it is. And I love when Damon's like, this place will make you bark at the moon. Or yeah. go bark at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I have a couple of questions about, about yeah. this. Um, okay. Has Helena been communicating with Damon the entire time he's been in Heron hall in, an, in, in like, like, a, because he obviously sees her in his vision, mm-hmm. but has she been, like working with this witch somehow by the way chris it is confirmed damon does call her a witch in this episode he's called her a witch multiple times he's a fucking witch (laughs) (laughs) if it Um, looks like a witch it casts spells like a witch it's probably uh, a fucking witch that was my one question does helena know about all of this that's been going on the entire time with damon and heron hall i think the answer is yes i believe she's been watching yeah what else she's made man, she's made mention i think she's been just kind of observing the whole of the war uh from both both sides hmm. what i also found interesting is she seems much less misty and foggy brained in this episode yeah she did she seems a lot Especially more when clear. confronting Eamon when he pulls her aside yeah. at the end even like, when yeah. she's talking with allison and then allison is asking her if she would like to leave this place mm-hmm yeah, it seems well, like she's coming more into her seer powers her or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah. I, I almost feel like it's more so that like this is the moment where she's supposed to be fully clear-headed and competent. You know, almost mm. like Hodor. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a good that's point. Her she kinda. her acting really came out in this episode too. She was awesome. This was the one yeah. time where I'm like, Helena, let's go. <laughs> I want to see more of her. I want to see her like this, more of her like this, because she could be. What? Why does she not have a seat on the council being a seat? Because she's fucking crazy. Yeah, but she's got these prophecies that we can, we can learn. She's like from. counting the legs on a centipede <laughs> in the corner while they're talking about the exactly. trade routes to have her in the corner, give her a little ball that she can play and, and roll on the floor with. And then every once in a while, she's going to give you but, a little nugget of knowledge that you're going to want to listen to. But do they know this? Are they putting two and two or her together saying like the beast beneath the boards and like I don't know. the rats are coming and things like that? I don't think they are. I think we're just putting that together. I think yeah. Allison may know. Wow. Maybe as a as a spectator that can see everything happening in the entire world, as a, it's it's a little different. Yeah. So, specifically, what she says is that she tells Amen that he's unable to change his future or death that she's already seen. Uh, I said Amen, right? Not Damon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Good. Their names, you know, sometimes in your head you think one thing. Um, okay. So. She also says that, like you had mentioned, Aegon will be king again and sit on a wooden throne, while Aemond will die and be swallowed up in the god's eye. Mm-hmm. You know what I think the god's eye is? And I think, Chris, you know what it is. I do. But I'm just going to give you my theory. I have no knowledge officially of what this is. <clears throat> the god's eye seems to me like some kind of... Uh, whirlpool like that that like there's some kind of battle over water and he either gets sucked into like some kind of water spout or whirlpool 
And uh, the only reason I think that is just because we get that vision of Eamon, of Damon drowning. I could mm-hmm. see both of them dying. I could see both of them fighting and dying in that manner. And so God's eye kind of makes me think, I don't know. I don't know why it makes me think that, but. I I, I don't know why, but I thought the God's eye was going to be like just where the Weirwood tree is at Heron Hall. Like that little little sanctuary. I know where it is. Um, I'm not going to say anything cause I don't want to spoil anything, but, um, what I'll tell you what I thought it was before I verified that I was correct. Uh, that's, that's unrelated was remember when old Nan used to tell stories to Bran in game of Thrones. And she talks about how, like some people think that there's like, she like references white walkers and she's like, and some people think we live on top of the giant eye of a God. And like, mm-hmm. if he ever blinks, he'll destroy the world. And like that was my first like thought to that was. How the fuck did you remember that? I don't know because it's like so (laughs) ominous and in the same breath with the White Walkers, and I'm like, well, the White Walkers were true. So is that true? Is this Mm. world actually just inside of Cabin in the Woods, and it's the (laughs) Ancients, and they can just destroy all of Essos and West? I also find it interesting that they're having characters literally tell us when people are dying, like. Helena is telling us Eamon's going to die at this place. The witch, yeah. Allison, is telling Damon, you will die in this place. Now, there's a lot open to interpretation. How long, How soon is that going to happen? What are the mm-hmm. circumstances of that going to be? Um, but yeah, they're just yeah. straight up telling us these characters are going to die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I personally think that, you know, it's going to be... I don't know, y'all. I feel like we all know who's going to be fighting and where. You know, like, I don't want to, like, setting it up pretty well. Yeah, I don't want to beat around the bush, but, like. Yeah, it's like kind of like the same with the more minor characters that, like, Ulf and Hugh, they kept focusing on them a lot. Obviously, they're going to have a big role to play. Alan, Adam, same with them. And then by the end of this season, surprise, they all now have a higher rank in whatever they were doing, and they have a much larger part of the story to play. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I feel like they've been setting all these things up pretty like well, and it's not like trying to fool you for the most part. Yeah. Well, I so you heard it here, folks. Uh, Brandon thinks that the God's Eye is near the Weirwood Tree at Heron Hall, and Trent thinks that Damon and um, Amon, Vagar, and Caraxes, that's Damon's dragon, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm will all be felled over some type of body of water or whirlpool and both end up drowning. Just as swallows. So that's what makes swallows. me think that. What else could yeah. you be swallowed by? Uh, my, honestly, my thought was the sky at first. No lie. Like swallowed by the God's eye, like thinking of like a gigantic, you know, blue like vastness. A, like a, yeah. 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 But, but either way, yeah, it's, I think, I think both of those are pretty, pretty apt. Um, now let's talk about some of House Black. Black like a dark Uh We need to talk about Ulf. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Ulf. What's Best that show? show? We don't talk about Bruno or whatever. That song. <laughs> we don't talk about Ulf. Tonto? Yeah, we don't talk about Ulf here. What an idiot, dude. Like. He gets he, raised up, and then he's acting like a total dick. To I know. Everyone. Why does he not understand? Like after Jace Ulf, confronts Ulf him, is the classic friend that you bring. That like, I'm not saying this personally happened to me, but like goes to somebody's house that has like really nice shit and doesn't know how to act. That is, <laughs> yeah. that is who Ulf is. Um, I also just want to say I was saying this last week before we got more confirmation that Ulf is a total douchebag Ulf is Mundungus Fletcher from Harry Potter he (laughs) is going to get one of these guys killed out of cowardice in Harry Potter Mundungus Fletcher is one of the six people that takes Polyjuice Potion to transport Harry Potter from Privet Drive to the Burrow Mad-Eye Moody is all of the Order of the Phoenix each are attached to one specific person that's drinking this potion. Hagrid's with Harry. Mad-Eye is with Mundungus because Mundungus is a fucking liability. 
Voldemort shows up, and at the first fucking sight of Voldemort, Mundungus apparates out of there, distracts Mad Eye, and Mad Eye Moody, one of the greatest horrors to ever live, is fucking dead at the beginning of the Deathly Hallows. That is what Ulf is going to do. Ulf is going to see Vagar and Aemon and shit his fucking pants and run away or try and turn to the other side, and he's going to get people fucking killed. Who do you think he's going to get killed out of curiosity if he had to put some money on someone? Adam Who's or Hugh? I, I would hate it if it was somebody really important. <laughs> like I'd be, Jace. I'd be kind of pissed if it was If Hugh. Jace dies from Ulf, <laughs> I am going to cackle. <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrible, dude. Like that would be the most Game of Thrones way to write it. It's like Jace falls trying to save Ulf, and Ulf flees and also dies. <laughs> yeah, you know who I could or see Ulf it being if they don't looks on him. Ah, oh, that you know I actually I... was kind of concerned about the flip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I could see if that doesn't happen, he's gonna try and flip sides because he's not gonna. I feel like he thinks, especially with the scene with Jace. Where he's comparing himself to him like they're equals, you know. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Oh yeah, you and me, dragon riders." And Jace is just like, "I want to fucking kill this guy." <laughs> but I could see, I could see it being Bela, and then Jace comes in and kills Ulf. Hmm. Who knows? I hope he doesn't get anyone killed. But I'm I just like pissed. I gotta to. wait another fucking season to see what happens with. I this feel like this next season we definitely need to start a Deadpool also and kind of predict who's going to be dying. Yeah, there should be a good amount of deaths. Mundungus Fletcher is absolutely going to enable some deaths, confirmed. I... Let's see, who else we got? Um, I think Trent's frozen. We didn't get too much Hugh, which is disappointing, because I like Hugh a lot, but he was kind of I do too. overlooked yeah. this episode. It's because he's like a normal dude who can actually not be a jackass, and they had to highlight how annoying Ulf was. <laughs> I wonder if we'll get some problems with uh, Hugh and his sense of honor because he is very taken aback uh, when Rhaenyra talks about the plans of how all the other, um, uh, the High Tower hosts and whatever other um, banners have been raised for the Greens. They have to. I forget the words cities, that, right? Yeah. yeah, I forget the words she uses, but she's basically saying we have to take them out. And he's like, mm-hmm. but they're innocent. And I'm wondering if that will come back and kind of be a hindrance. Didn't she say that. didn't she say we must break the will of our enemy? Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. Like, also, I, I furthering Jace's concern with having these lowborns being raised up in their ranks essentially when Rhaenyra leaves to go to Harrenhal after all this time, finally. She decides to take Adam with her, which I think really rubbed Jace the wrong way. I'm glad that she took Adam. Adam needed some flight. She, Jeez, I can't speak. He needed his flight hours. He needed to log some hours. <laughs> and honestly, people needed to see that Sea Smoke has a rider again. I I thought that was fine because number one, Jace needs to realize his place that he is the heir and he can't be off gallivanting, putting himself at risk. He needs to be more of the person that can. He also sees the other side of it where House Green doesn't seem to mind at all. They're just going out and joining battles willy nilly. Yeah, yeah, that is. I think he's better used for the situations like well, he didn't. He wasn't used in this way. He went off on his own, but claiming the twins. Mm. Yeah. For Rain era. Yeah, that was good. Which I loved that scene that we get with the stock. The stock. Yeah. North remembers. It didn't uh, go so yeah. well from the last time that we saw them. No. The no, it's not. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Yeah, thank God. Um so we kind of touched on Adam. Let's let's talk about Rhaenyra and Adam and Heron Hall and Simon Strong and whoever that guy whose house got burnt down by pissed off Eamon. Mm. Yeah. Um so, first off, Simon Strong's drip in this episode is god tier. He, he goes strong. He goes real strong. I saw a, a tweet that was like, they used 90% of the production budget on this dude's costume. <laughs> I, <saw that> I, <laughs> I love this character. Me too, dude. He's awesome. Um, I love also that he... loyal, loyal to the queen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Five minutes after hearing that there might be some treacherous stuff going on, Hey, Rhaenyra, can you come and deal with this? I'm pretty sure you're going to want to be here. Boom, two dragons, like, immediately. <laughs> this just reminded me of that South Park episode, and uh, 
them like the one guy going and saying like yeah they're in the garden talking about you they're gonna <laughs> get out of my garden quit quit scheming he's gonna betray you <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> um yeah so we get this scene of Caraxes being like oh shit my cousins are coming <laughs> those which, my boys yeah those which was kind gigs. of <laughs> and uh trent i know i know you love damon talk a little bit about him kind of walking with uh alfred pre um pre rainier and adam getting there yeah so um he's very smug when alfred comes in like oh okay rainier uh is sending you to, uh, you know, make sure that I'm doing what I need to do. And he's kind of bragging. He's being very braggadocious about this. Oh, I just lost. I lost Trent. Did you lose Trent? Yeah, right? sorry. I've got okay. Wi-Fi issues. No worries. Here, I'll, uh, I'll jump in here for a second. So basically what Simon Strong... The reason Simon Strong reaches out to Rhaenyra is Alfred, when he comes, he's supposed to go and find out what's going on with Damon and to get a status update on Heron Hall, see if he's raising this host, and more truthfully, like what the hell is even going on right now? You know, like mm -hmm. like he's just been MIA. So he gets there and little do we know, I actually and tell me what you think about this, Brandon. I thought at first when he was saying all this stuff, it was a test to see if he could trust Damon, like by putting out that he wanted to align with him. He wanted to get like a temperature gauge on if Damon was willing that's, to betray her. That's not what my initial thought was just because he's clashed with Rainier so many times in the small council. I, True. I mean, I genuinely was like, this guy is about to try to raise up Damon to the king. He doesn't. He doesn't want to follow Rhaenyra anymore. Why did she send him? You think? I think she wanted him off her court <laughs> in the first place. So I'll send you to go check in on Damon, who I'm concerned about might be treacherous. <laughs> yeah. Well, Not I think she probably also thinks there's a chance that Damon kills this guy. True. And then she gets her answer. <laughs> That's fair. You no. Know, do you guys think that, that Damon, Damon was still considering? Like, do you think that he was considering Alfred's kind of proposition up until uh, he has the vision at the tree? Um, I, I don't know. Kind because of he was so changed whole... after, after last episode where he had that talk with Viserys yeah. and he didn't yeah. accept the crown right away. So I, I, I don't know if he was still kind of plotting that way. I think, I think for... it might have been like 70-30. And yeah, then once he gets to the tree, he really gets his, it's really cements that yeah. he's part of something bigger. I was more feeling like, uh, like, uh, yeah, like you said, 70, 30, but then he had an opportunity to kind of always get what he wanted in his mind. And then maybe that was going to sway him a little bit back towards like 50, 50, and yeah. then after the Weirwood, like, you can't really say no to the Weirwood. Not after like, what he sees. <laughs> yeah, once the tree starts bleeding all over your hand, you don't really ignore that. Um, Do you want to talk about that? Because that, that's, like, one of the most important scenes in this episode. It's the best part of the episode. Yeah, yes. I think it is, too. Yes. Also, there was part of me thinking that as soon as Alfred said that, he was going to lop his head off. Obviously, I didn't know the Weirwood tree scene was coming. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is when he's like, no. Yeah. Been changed. <laughs> that uh so the that scene was basically a like a flash forward, the vision that he sees through the weirwood tree. Alice Rivers takes Damon to the tree at night. He just like wakes up and she's on his bed. He's having he's another like, Don't an you ever sleep, witch? <laughs> literally. And uh so she takes him to the tree. She tells him to put his hand on it. And I actually don't remember exactly what she had said prior to uh prior to him him doing that. She basically tells him he's like but one part of a larger story though. She it's says kinda... she says this world will not, will not be governed. Yes. 
That's what That's, it was. But you were just a piece on the board. Yep. Right. And so there he, was kind of a funny little joke between them where she's like talking about visions and things like that. And she's like, Oh, you don't have anything to say? He's like, I'm over that. I this shit is too much. I have no oh, yeah. any of this stuff. Yeah. He's like, I've seen too much. Yeah. <laughs> um but uh so he does touch the tree and he gets a flash forward into the White Walkers. He gets a flash forward into Daener- Daenerys Targaryen being born with the three dragons hatch or um I'm sorry, not her being born, but the three dragons being born in the fire yeah. from Game. <laughs> There's essential rebirth of Daenerys, yeah. Um it has I believe there was dead dragons. There was one dead dragon. I was trying to figure out who it was. I couldn't tell. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. Um, well, I think it also showed, if I'm not mistaken, it showed like two different fates. One that if Damon continued along his path and the other, what, like following the actual Song of Ice and Fire. I did not interpret it that way, but I'll have Me to go either. back and, and look. Yeah. Because we also see right near sitting on the Iron Throne. And then we mm. see Damon walking amongst a ton of dead bodies and blood and kind of flipping with the cool camera flip into the water and drowning. Yep. I thought something interesting that I noticed was a man stepping from behind the weirwood tree with uh, yeah. like with stag horns. Yeah. Now that I saw before he touched the tree, right? Yeah, yeah. It was before he touched it. Yeah, it was creepy. <laughs> I saw two interesting interpretations. One is that that was House Baratheon, which brings about the fall of House Targaryen. I thought it was that. A, a reference to that. The other <laughs> one was someone saying maybe it's like one of the children of the forest. I thought that and, too. Those are both the things. And then obviously we get that, like the legitimate three eyed raven at the end of this. Uh huh. So, uh, what do you guys think about that? I you think, think he's in the Heron Hall tree. The three eyed raven. Oh, I don't. I don't yeah, know about any of this that. one. I don't know about that it's, necessarily. It's really hard to piece together like specifically What's going on all with that? Of the things and what that means. But I love it as a plot device for Damon to finally relinquish his anger towards Rhaenyra for you know basically being given what he thinks is rightfully his mm-hmm. and recognizing that. He is a piece in a much larger story. And we get that confirmation when he says, you know, winter is coming. There are things here that uh, we won't be able to survive, but we're going to have to face on. Um, Like kind of understanding that everything that exists right now is in peril. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also sees Rhaenyra obviously on the Iron Throne in this vision. And that's kind of the part of his vision that confirms that she's going to be the one who could save them from yeah. from the White Walkers. Um, I don't know if he talked about the Red Comet in his vision, too. No, we didn't. Um, the, the princess that was promised. Prophecy. Um, but... I mean, this was, this was crazy. This was a crazy-ass scene. I felt like this, like... Absolutely, there was so much to unpack in this. Oh my god! Yeah, sorry, I was kind of reading a recap of all of these because I only watched it one time. So, like now that I'm looking at like each individual still, it is definitely the dragon that's dead is one that we know. I mean, that one makes that, sense. Like, yeah, like one that we're very aware of. So if you go back and yeah. watch it, you'll probably be able to identify it. Um, I'll have to rewatch it then, because I've only seen it once also. Yeah. But um, I I just think that, yeah, this turning point for Damon was awesome. We get a little bit of, of Game of Thrones magic in there. We also get, you know, finally Damon is able to, to leave Harrenhal I also really liked seeing Heron Hall fully occupied with a host. Yeah, that army is huge. That army is bussing, bro. That thing They've is gigantic. Got a ton of pigs. 
so I many love pigs. Seeing like all the like the tents outside of Heron Hall too, just littered out there. Yeah. Can I say something real quick about all these visions and connecting to Game of Thrones? How do we feel about that? I I think that it's just kind of like I I liked it as a use of a plot device, but they keep going back to this, and I'm like, I'm okay nobody. With it what happened at the end of that show and you're teasing us with like danny like oh i remember i remember danny at the dragons and then but like that doesn't bring up good memories <laughs> yeah 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 i Not mean I think they need to lean away from that yeah i think at this point you know damon having that vision anything else like no one else really needs to have visions outside of helena so like what else do they really need to tie into game of thrones and the song of ice and fire you know i think this is all you need i think that like rhaenyra passing it like viserys passing it down to rhaenyra her pacing it down to jaceris and then damon now understanding this those were all plot devices to motivate these characters mm -hmm. and i think that's all we need i don't think we need any more of the song of ice and fire i agree and if anything, yeah. the only other things I would be interested in is like the three eyed Raven, but not related, not how he relates to the white walkers. I completely forgot that that was a Targaryen bastard. The three eyed Raven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brandon rivers. And he's mm -hmm. in the Riverlands, So maybe yeah. he is in the freaking tree. <laughs> I, I, I feel like there's a dude inside that tree. He's got stag horns. <laughs> He hasn't been born yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I'm not, you're probably right. The timelines of Game of Thrones are, like, arguably as convoluted as our own. Well, the hard thing is it's hard to go check the timelines because I don't want to spoil anything for this yeah. show. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I don't don't the Google show. what the gods I is. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> sure, it'll, um, sure, it'll spoil it. Yeah. But... Um, anything so let's talk about this actual like moment between damon and rhaenyra which was one of the most satisfying scenes that was hot that mm -hmm. was that was hot. i saw this thing that's like a man can literally never be as hot as this and it's like damon kneeling to rhaenyra in like two different scenes in this <laughs> in the show and i'm like honestly yeah like damon goes hard in the paint for rhaenyra in this episode like his speech was awesome. It was. And I loved their little conversation where she's like, um, don't, don't ever, ever leave me again. Don't ever try and leave me or leave me again at your own peril. And he's yeah. like, I would not. I have tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was cute. That was a sweet little sweet little moment between the two of them. And uh like you said, Sir Alfred in the back going Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Gulp. <laughs> Time to run. Yeah, dude, that was that was funny. I feel like um, you're just part of that guy sent him to the watch. Yeah. He was I mean it's not best for the realm. He was like, Rhaenyra, she's out here doing crazy shit. Yeah. Just letting I, all this stuff happen. Also, that dude like doesn't have a keep or any kind of people left anymore because they all got melted. So yeah. Like that dude's just kind of probably vibing. Um, and I liked uh, I liked her little kind of connect with. Well, all right, we're done with the werewoods. We're into Rainier landing. I liked when she walked up and Simon Strong was like so hype about her being there. And then when everything like worked out well, he's literally like jumping up and down and clapping and shit. And I'm like, he's I'm like so my guy. <laughs> I'm like, let's go. <laughs> His little background quips and noises, like in the uh, last episode when Damon is like, "Who is Damon confronting?" But um, Simon Strong is like, "Oh my!" <laughs> it reminds me of three PO. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, all right. So, but besides that, let's talk about. Let's get back to the oceans. Speaking of the God's Eye, Corliss Valarian. And his Sultan C. his bastard son Alan. This Alan, uh, excellent scene in my opinion. What's his? I what agree. are? The, what are their? Uh, what are the bastards in that area? His last name called? Do we know? Uh, 
I Hull. don't know. Allen of them. Hull. Hull. But Hull yeah. is a place though. That's not like their last name. It's not like it's not like rivers or snow. And also you're be- you're only you're only given the bastard name if you're recognized by your father as a bastard. So they don't have like like if that if the last if the bastard name of Dragonstone or of uh Driftmark is C, these guys aren't going to have that because he doesn't officially recognize them. I did not so, know that. Yeah. Um, Actually, I don't. Uh, I don't know if Hull's a place though. I do they go there in Game they, of Thrones? Can, another another podcast I listened to uh, was saying that like it's Adam of Hull, as in like of the place Hull. Maybe uh, maybe this, Hull uh, is uh, is like a like flea bottom of Driftmark, you know, or something like that. I don't know. Word mm. word okay. Because a lot of them are named. So a lot of the bastards are named either regionally or after their profession. So Hugh Hammer is a bastard. Mm. Alan of Hull is a sailor. And, and and Adam is also of Hull, but like you said, they could be in the same spot. All of that to say, I his moment. I was not expecting him to pop off in this way. <laughs> he like I mean it shows that after all this time of being ignored and seeing his father essentially just raise his other children walk by him on the streets buying meat going to the castle like it that resentment it builds and now he wants to help him after he's lost his heirs after he's lost his wife after all this now it's my time no fuck off i, I loved totally him bringing it. up that he will literally see him march his like actual son through the streets yeah that was just kind of a powerful moment. It's crazy because from the dynamic between Adam and Alan, Alan has never really spoken much about their father between the two of them. He doesn't say a lot about him. Whereas Adam has very much been like, I wish he would recognize us like wanting to have that relationship. So you kind of, mm-hmm. it makes you feel like maybe Alan doesn't have this negative perception towards his father that Adam does. And then when he comes out with this, it's like, Oh yeah, no, this dude fucking hates him. Yeah, yeah, that was a shocker. I was surprised by that. Do we think that in uh this next battle that we're gonna get um at sea that maybe we get Corliss sacrificing himself for a- Alan? I think we might. Maybe. I feel like that's what we're leading to because I do think Alan ends up being the heir to Driftmark. I mean, they've leaned into that really heavily. He hasn't named an heir, though, which is the crazy thing. You're going out to war, and you have no heir. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Do you think the naval battle will be will be cool? I feel like the one that we got in the end of Game of Thrones was all right, but very short. Dude, the battle of... What was it? The battle of... What was the one with Tyrion in like season two? The Blackwater was Blackwater? awesome. That was a lot of that you don't awesome see. That's in the sea. Yeah. You don't see too much fighting in the sea, though. There, yeah, that I was all, you, mostly on land. Right. The the only real sea combat we got was when the the Greyjoy fleet like ambushed the Dornish that? women. You also see Danny just torching ships on top yeah. of the dragon. I would love to see like an epic Pirates of the Caribbean style. Me too. I mean, we give have me pirates here. Give me but, a yeah. full one hour episode of that. Like, seriously, I want that to be... They need to lean into the pirate naval combat stuff because House Valerian is so integral to this. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was one of the things for the Greyjoys we did not get enough of was them just being on ships and doing piratey stuff. It's true. So Yeah, we need to get like a hard home Battle of the Bastards, Blackwater type style battle here. Yes, please. All of those put together. Zombie Kraken. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, um, back whenever uh, what's her name is introduced as uh, the commander of the uh, the Free Cities fleet, Lohar, when they yeah. were saying like, oh, yeah, Lohar, you, you, they, 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 Lohar has to. S- First of all, they said Lohar is a he. Yeah, I was confused about that. that. Yeah. So they said he has to sail with you. The men will only follow him. And mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, fuck, that's going to be Lanor. That's going to be Lanor. <laughs> that would have been kind of crazy. Dead. That would have been an I interesting th- twist. I just think Lanor is dead. 
Sea Jesus. Smoke has been bonded. I think they just died off screen. You think so? Yeah. A- dude, how it. crazy would it be if Aegon and Laris run into Lenor in Essos? <laughs> yeah. They're all just vibing I out. I actually could see that happening. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know the intricacies of like. <laughs> Trent can't get Joe. past. Lenor is not allowed to be alive if Sea Smoke rebonds, is right. what Trent thinks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I'm at. And I can I can respect that, but yeah. honestly, well, I'm not said that. But he's I don't... also said that the show has its own canon. Yes, yeah. I was gonna say I don't want to get too attached to like how dragons bond because then if one happens, I'm gonna just be like taken out of it. But also, George, finish the fucking books. Yeah, see, I'm not listening to a single thing George says. Yeah, you're not allowed to make the rules anymore. It's our it's our universe now. Um, okay, so. Yeah, Corliss, Alan, that's going to be awesome. Um, you know, Alan is his first mate now uh, on his ship. And he kind of tells him, like, all right, I need you to, like, actually inspire the men. You're, like, very distant. That's kind of how that whole fight started. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then uh, Corliss's dumbass says, I'm trying to help you. Nah, dog, don't say that. Oh, now you want to help. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. And then, is there anything I'm forgetting? I feel like we've covered all of Reina. Reina catching oh, mm-hmm. Steeler. Yep. Yes. The I final love scene. that they showed her trek, and it seemed like this yeah. lasted days. Like, yeah, she's she sees a river and she just immediately starts gulping down this water. Yeah, we see no. her like sleeping next to a rock and it's freezing, freezing to cold. death. Yeah, we saw. Rhaenyra's other two children, though, being taken away to Pentos. Are they just heading to Pentos now? And Reyna's like, no, nah, I'm not going there. I'm going to go for this dragon. Like, they're just out of the picture. Yeah, I think I'm until they grow sure. up, they're under the protection of whoever. Yeah. Um. Also, though, I think she kind of Maybe she brings them to... back? I don't know. I feel like what? Rhaenyra would be pretty pissed if she's like, you just left my kids. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But you got a dragon. So how pissed can I be? True. Um, but yeah, sheep stealer. I saw someone describe sheep stealer as like a dirty mangy alley cat dragon. <laughs> the wings were crazy, dude. The yeah. wings on sheep stealer. Did you get a close up like look at that? No, let me let me go ahead. And let me see close. Yeah. yeah, sheep stealer. The wings are like spiked and curly. They, they almost oh, look like they yeah, almost look like the, oh, like tattered kind of. They almost look like mm-hmm. robes. I think it looks sick. Are you gonna share? Are you gonna share it, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. This one's. Let's this take one's a, a little. Let's take a look at this again. Digitally altered just to make I it brighter, make but this one here. Let's see. So yeah, yeah. Look at those wings. Those are so cool. Mm-hmm. Oh God! What have I done? I love the variation of dragons that they have in this show too. I they do agree. Very they very good job. Very distinct. And yeah, I mean, I know that's kind of blurry because it was kind of like an over the shoulder shot. You can um, see it. But yeah, I'm I mean, I think as far as this dragon goes, this one looks like he's on crack, and I'm here for it. I definitely want to see Raina him. Raina immediately find, flies back to Dragonstone with this to uh Or did she Rhaenyra? go to the Vale? I don't know. To Lady at this Aaron? Point at this point, she doesn't really have a reason to go back, I guess. I mean, I guess she could just go pick up Rhaenyra's kids and just be like, yeah, we're, we're going back to the Vale. I got this dragon here now. Yeah. At the same yeah, time, though, does, does she want to offer that service to Lady Aaron now, since she was kind of a bitch to her? Does she want to offer it to Rhaenyra? That's she what, was yeah, kind of pissed that Rhaenyra was sending her out there because she didn't have a dragon. Yeah, but mm. I think her sister kind of talked her off that hill. I was like, listen, this is something... Especially that- when she saw the eggs and that she was yeah. interesting her with those dragon eggs, yeah. Well, um, and then the last thing, I don't think we missed anything else. Oh, yeah, we talked about Otto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Daron, obviously. The the final scene that we should address is all of the yeah. armies marching, which was this freaking is a awesome. Cool scene. Mm-hmm. This is a like, cool scene. 
Like, and it plays all of their scores. So when it plays, when you I see them, I love hearing the, the Rain to Castamere come on. When the, the Lannisters, yes, from Casterly Rock. And then uh, we also get, I think they show the Northmen again. They show the North yeah, cross, cross the twins. Cross yeah. The twins. And then they show the Heron Hall host, uh-huh. which is the Riverlands. And then we also see Corliss and his fleet. And then the fleet from Triarchy. Essos. Yes. Yeah. And, and then we get the high towers marching with Daron's dragon flying above them. Yes. Mm-hmm. What is the army they're going to send to fight that host? Uh, I don't know. Are they just going to fight him with dragons? I would, I would think that you know, you just send a dragon to burn that host because you, you have Darren's dragon who has just taken wing. Like, he is brand new at this. Mm-hmm. Send out freaking sea smoke and just torch Darren's dragon then. <laughs> send Ulf. I'll send Silverwing. <laughs> yeah. Get I would love there. for Ulf to fall off his fucking dragon. That's what I would <laughs> <laughs> He's going to end up doing something heroic, I feel like. No. I will will leave my hat if he does that. (laughs) Dude, Game of Thrones has a way of making fools into heroes. And heroes into fools. It's very true. Um... But yeah, I I just loved like all of the different song, all the different scores for each house playing, all the different armies, their different colors, the different dragons that were escorting them. That scene was freaking epic, and that's like I can't wait for the next season. But it's also one of the most frustrating parts of this whole episode. It's so frustrating. It was. It's so hype. It's setting up all the pieces for next season. It really does feel like an opening to like the next season because I you're setting up God. everything that's about to happen. Yeah. I I finished this episode. I'm like, oh, they're they're gonna surprise us, and there's gonna be like a credit that says. I felt the same. One more I, I actually episode. paused. I paused it like 20 minutes before <laughs> the episode ended. I'm like, okay, there's still 20 minutes left. One there, more plenty of things, and then it ended three minutes later. And the rest was just like inside the episode, talking about the episode, yeah. talking about the Game of Thrones app that you can download, whatever. And not like, Conquest. <laughs> don't download Conquest. If you're out there listening, do not I download am, that stupid game. I am never downloading. Game of HBO Conquest. will never ever sponsor our podcast, and that's okay because we're telling you right now: never download that stupid mobile game. Uh, all right. Well, great breakdown overall. Amazing show. Like one of the yeah. best shows out there. We can have our criticisms and complaints, um, mm. but it's just great to have Game of Thrones again. It's not um, TV. It is. Yeah, it is for sure. Uh, can't wait to cover. Let's see. What's the next great show we're going to cover? Maybe the uh, the HBO. Um, the what's Pink it called? Prince. The Dune. The Dune. Uh, the Dune show. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Dune Prophecy or the Penguin. Penguin. Oh, the yes, Penguin. penguin we should do soon. week by week the Penguin. I yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that one, dude. I I really like. They said that that uh, takes place and directly connects to the next Batman movie. Hell yes. Yeah. G- give me Clayface in live That's action. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well. If you had any questions or further thoughts on this episode, if there's anything that we didn't touch on or any gaping issues that you had with something that we said, drop us a comment or hit us on uh, Instagram or Twitter in our DMs and let us know, and uh, we'll try to rectify that for you. And uh, we very much appreciate all of you tuning in week to week for the House of the Dragon coverage we've been doing. It's been pretty sick uh covering this and kind of getting some traction on youtube so we really appreciate all the support out there and we look forward to uh obviously look forward to the next season i mean mm-hmm. looking forward to it is kind of understating it at this point blue balled over here yeah uh boys anything else y'all want to say i think we've said enough thank you for dealing with my shitty wi-fi today <laughs> It's nice not to be on that end every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, Geek Peakers, we are going to go ahead and climb down off the summit of the Geek Peak, and we will see you here next week. Peace. Later.